Hi, Jen. Hi, Victoria. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We are in February still. We are still uh, talking about teen dating violence. And uh, last time we gathered, you might remember that we talked about what do we mean when we say teen dating violence? So what are some of the warning signs and red flags? This time we're gathering, we're going to talk a little bit more about what can you do as a parent or a caregiver, another important adult in a young person's life to have a conversation about behaviors that you're noticing and, and to really open up that line of communication. So let's get right into that. Uh, Jen, take it away. Let's talk about how you have these hard conversations. Yeah, I think we, we touched on this last time, but having conversations often um, and early, even before you're concerned is really important. Uh, and we do have a parent guide on our website that has a lot of good tips and suggestions on, on what you can say and how you can say things. And, and I think that's what we wanna try to share a little bit today. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things is, again, just establishing this open, honest line of communication. Um, you know, let your teens, the young adults in your life talk freely, you know, ask them how they're feeling about things, um, you know, and really give that opportunity for reflection on, on what's happening in their lives. Yeah, I love that. So how does that work? Like, what do we say? I'm a young parent. Everything's overwhelming. Walk me through it. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, we have some really, you know, easy examples in our parent guide. Um, one of the, you know, questions to ask when you're having, you know, I think having casual conversations is a big thing for me and having those conversations in the car, you know, mm -hmm. um, or when you're just sitting around chatting, but, you know, asking, are any of your friends dating? Like, what are their relationships like? Um, you know, a lot of times it's easier to talk about somebody else than to talk about yourself. So that really, um, you know, maybe helps kids open up a little bit. Um, you know, I think talking about what qualities they're looking for in a relationship, what do you want in your dating partner? Um, you know, what's good, what's bad and helping them try to navigate that. Um, and then, um, you know, talking about uh, what you would do if your friends were in a relationship that you had concerns about, you know, and I think, you know, not only do we want our kids to kind of be upstanders, but we also want them to, to, you know, we often would say, well, how would, you know, like, how would you feel if your friend was being treated that way? And they would mm -hmm. say, well, I wouldn't tolerate that, or I wouldn't, yeah. you know, um, or I would want to say something to them. Well, you know, you need, let's have those same boundaries for yourself. You know, if that's important to you that your friend is treated respectfully, then you should deserve to be treated respectfully too. Um, and I think it's so, okay to ask about specific things that are happening, right? And say like, well, what are the good things in the relationship? What makes you happy? What makes you feel comfortable? Um, you know, what's happening that you don't feel comfortable about or that you would like to change? Um, and that also opens that conversation and, and can lead to, well, is this the right relationship for you? <laughs> um, you know, is that something that can be changed? And, and like we said, it can lead towards looking at the specific relationship. It can lead towards creating boundaries for themselves, um, or at least if nothing else, having a better understanding of what they're looking for. Um, I love the car tip. Like when I worked with young people, they opened up in the car and part of it is like, no one's going anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can talk about the music, that's a good segue, right? And you don't have to look at each other, which can be kind of open, it can be kind of liberating sometimes. Um, so yeah. I just wanted to flag that I love that tip. <laughs> and that's a great time too, you can bring up like songs and TV shows, like, you know, Victoria said, they don't always wanna talk about themselves. So, you know, if a song comes on that, you know, the lyrics lend themselves, ask, you know, mm -hmm. what does this mean? How do you feel about that? I think there are, you know, there are a lot of good topics to, to segue into talking about their own relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, it's really important to know that it's, you know, that we're not gonna have all the, you know, like parents, caregivers, we're not gonna have all the answers. Um, and it is okay 
to, you know, we say we want to make sure that we're having open discussions and that we're not, you know, judging, but we also want to, I want to make sure that people know it's okay to be firm. It's okay to be assertive and it's okay to be, you know, to set limits. And I think one of the things that can even be helpful in, to the kids, if you're setting those limits is, well, my mom doesn't let me talk on the phone after 10 o'clock, or yeah. my mom says I can only, you know, receive so many text messages, you know, every day or something, you know? So I think taking the responsibility away from the child and saying like, this is my parents' rule, um, you know, cause the other person is also has parents that are setting limits or caregivers that are setting limits. So I think that can be helpful. Um, and I think it's always okay to express our concern, you know, and I think it doesn't, we're not gonna be able to solve everything right away. Um, you know, and I think if we're trying to, you know, um, ban somebody from seeing their partner, that's going to backfire on us. But it is okay, I think, to say, um, you know, we're going to continue to talk about this. This is really concerning to me. You know, in in my opinion, this isn't, you know, healthy. Um, and and making sure that you're continuing to have those conversations so that the kids know that you're concerned and. And that, um, you know, you're aware of what's happening. Yeah. And if you think about, you know, teens outside of the house, right, and, and, you know, looking at education specifically, right, the teachers that they tend to go to are the ones that are strict, right, and have very clear boundaries who are going to hold them to high standards. Um, they know what the consequences are, yet they know that that person cares. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there is a difference, right? Setting a boundary, being tough <laughs> on teens, you know, can be done while showing it's because I care about you. And, and that's really what they respond to. And, and it's going to help them navigate life and feel secure if they know what those boundaries are, but yet it's because you care and you're there for them. I love that. It's like, I love you. I'm scared, right? Like I'm vulnerable as a parent. I'm scared. And, um, and as we're encouraging self-esteem, right. That which we know is like a really big part of being in a healthy relationship. Like this all kind of contributes to building that up in our young people too. I love that reminder. And I think if nothing what, else, call us, we're happy to yeah. help through yeah. <laughs> what's going on. Here's some suggestions on what to say or how to start this conversation. Yeah. One thing to keep in mind, I think, is sometimes kids, no matter what type of relationship they have with their parents or their caregivers, they're still going to be reluctant to talk to you. And I think, um, and that has, that's not anything that you're doing wrong. I think it's more about kids feeling ashamed of disappointing you or feeling guilty about the relationship. So I think it's also important to note if you're not ready to talk to me about this, can you talk to your auntie? Can you talk to your, you know, guidance counselor? Is there another trusted adult that you can talk to? And when you're ready to talk to me, I'm here and willing to listen. I love that. And is there anything that you can offer as far as like uh, parents and educators coordinating at all about, you know, like, is there any tips for maybe going to your, your child's guidance counselor? Like what, what does that look like? I think that can be tricky because, yeah. you know, of course the fear is your kid's going to say, why'd you go to someone about this? I, um, but I think at the same time, educating yourself, right, as a caregiver or parent or adult um, is really important, right? And so if you're, you're going with that in mind of, I just want to know more about this. I want to know how to support my child um, rather than sharing the deep, dark secrets of your yes. kids. Um, you know, again, that's showing your child you care and you're looking for more support to help them ultimately. Um, adjustment counselors, um, you know, should know too the sensitivity around the peer pressure and the concern that that teens have. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, they're going to address it in a in a safe, respectful way as well. Thank you. Any other thoughts before we we link to some resources? We'll link to our parent guide. We will 
um, share our support line because like Jen said, we are here. Um, we can we can role play some if that's helpful. Um, we've done that before. So um, any other thoughts before we say goodbye? I think just try something, do something, right? Doing nothing, staying silent, we know is not gonna help. Yeah. I would say don't be don't be too hard on yourself if you have a conversation that isn't successful. You know, try again. Um, you know, we're gonna say things that we don't mean and you know, maybe it backfires, but try again. You know, I think we're gonna make mistakes and that's okay and just keep trying and um and accept that that's okay, you know what I mean? So I, I used to work with a prevention educator who, who would say, nobody ever died of awkward. And so um, be brave, you know, mess mm -hmm. up and try again uh, because that's how relationships are built and strengthened and um, not saying something can be dangerous. So yeah, be brave. It's just need to know you care. Yeah. Thank you.